Hey everybody, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. Okay, so in this lesson, I wanna talk about editing clips in Ableton Live uh, 11. A lot of really great improvements to editing clips that just makes uh, producing and creating your own music uh, so much more fun and uh, so much faster. So <clears throat> what I have here is an audio clip and two MIDI clips. Now, a couple of things I just wanna point out. We've kind of briefly talked about these in other videos uh, in other lessons. But when I go to this drum part here, um, I can select uh, you know, an individual note and I have all these expression editors that are available in the expression tab where I can go in and edit pressure, velocity, release velocity, slide, all those sorts of things. Again, I can show or hide these editors, but I can edit each note individually, which is really, really great. Now, if I go over here to this first tab um, and I can then go in and change probability and velocity for the note if I wanted to. And again, probability is how likely is this note uh, going to play? When I adjust probability, I get this great little uh, kind of icon there to let me know, hey, you, this note has a probability set, <clears throat> which again means you may not hear this note every single time. In this case, it's, uh, let's see, 73% of the time I'm going to hear this note uh, potentially. Uh, so we could adjust that. And again, just I would say be careful with this function uh, for things that you really need to be consistent, right? So that could be. Uh, a dangerous feature if you're not careful with that. Uh, but again, I could go into the expression tab here and adjust the pressure of each one of these individual notes if I wanted to, the polyphonic aftertouch that was recorded um, uh, previously with the push. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature. Now let's go to this bass part here though. Uh, this brings up some really cool uh, abilities and functionality in Ableton Live. Uh, so if I go and enable scale, by default it has this cool new feature that's gonna highlight every single note that is diatonic to the key. So for instance, I'm in the key of C, uh, C major. Uh, it's gonna show me every single note in this kind of pink highlight here uh, that is diatonic to the key. So this is a great feature that's gonna help you learn music theory, help you learn your scales. Uh, maybe it's something you knew in the past, but you forgot. This is gonna be a great reminder kind of what notes uh, are in the scale, what notes are diatonic. <clears throat> now we have the ability to press fold and that's only gonna show us notes that are played or notes that are used, but we now have this fold to scale button. And this is really helpful because it's gonna fold down the notes to just show us notes that are diatonic to the key. Again, as we go in and we edit or we create MIDI, um, this is gonna be a real, real help to kind of clean that up and see just the notes that are available to us in that scale, which is great. Um, now, one thing I could do, let's go over to this expression editor here. Um, because this is a sound that is MPE enabled, uh, I'm using Wavetable, uh, which supports MPE. I can click on a note here and I get this individual note pitch bin effect, right? Um, this is if you have an MPE uh, uh, MIDI controller, you can you know basically bend the pitch of each individual note if you want to, as well as slide and polyphonic aftertouch. Um, but I can go in and edit each individual note. And again, this is a pretty cool feature if you have an MPE enabled uh, device to be able to hear that pitch bend. Let's see, I don't know how well we'll be able to hear this, but let's solo this part out and see if we can hear it. it sounds like you can hear it just a little bit. Um, but again, on some more drastic sounds, uh, that can be uh, really, really kind of impactful. And again, um, it helps with this idea of making music more expressive, more uh, feeling more like a human is playing a bass as opposed to a machine uh, that's playing a bass part that has been programmed to be perfect. Okay, so I can make some edits to my notes like we talked about there. Um, I could go in and enable, I don't know that I necessarily wanted would want to do this, but I could go in and draw, uh, use my draw mode and actually try to draw in, uh, let's get out of draw mode, get out of expression editor, there we go. Uh, go into our note editor here. I could go in and try to draw in some bass parts and as I click and drag, you're gonna see that's gonna change pitch, right? That may be what I want, but it may not be what I want. So let's undo all of those. I could right click though and enable uh, draw mode, uh, pitch lock is off. 
Uh, if I go in though and hold Option now, let's go back to pitch mode uh, or press B to go back to draw mode. And I want to click and hold Option. And as I drag now uh, while holding Option, it's going to lock all of those notes to this one particular pitch. Now it's going to sound terrible. Let's let's <laughs> listen to what that sounds like. Right? Doesn't necessarily sound great, but it allows me to basically uh, draw in notes and lock it to pitch by holding Option. Now we talked about this in the preferences walkthrough, but if I go command comment to live's preferences uh, and go into the record warp launch tab down at the bottom here, mini note drawing, um, I could enable draw mode with pitch lock to be on all the time if we wanted. Or again, like I said here, when I'm in draw mode, just hold down option and uh, click and drag and that's going to um, add that in and lock it into the grid. Now, um, let me disable draw mode. I want to select both of these clips. So I have a bass part and I have a drum part. So I'm going to select the drum part, hold shift, and then click the bass part. And you see this brand new view that's going to basically layer multiple MIDI clips together, which is really, really nice. Again, I can press fold, which is going to fold this up. This makes it easier to see because I'm only seeing parts that I've played, essentially. Um, again, um, this uh, to me just makes it way easier to see each of these individual parts. I could click the loop brace and adjust the loop brace for each of these parts too if I wanted to. Kind of change where that loop is happening uh, if I wanted, uh, which again could be kind of a helpful and useful utility. There's a chance though that you get into this and you have a lot of parts selected and things start to get pretty complicated. Uh, we have this brand new focus mode that's going to make it way easier to see uh, which part you're currently editing and kind of get a better view of things. So what I could do is press this focus button here and then whatever loop brace I click, uh, it's going to bring that part to the forefront. So for instance, uh, I clicked focus, I've clicked my base part here for this loop brace, and now I'm seeing my base part as kind of the primary there. So I can go in, edit individual notes, velocity, probability for that if I want to. Um, or I can go up here and click my drums, and now I see my drum part kind of in the forefront. I can disable focus here. If you want to hold in the letter N, that's going to temporarily enable focus mode. So you could go in and edit stuff, figure out what note it is. Okay, that's the note, and then go in and make your edits there if you want to. Um, I think this is a really helpful thing because, for instance, I'm looking at this. I want to try to line up my kick and my, um, my bass parts. I can see they're slightly off here. So what I could do is take this bass note and just move this over. I could press in and select my drum part. And that's going to bring that to the forefront. You see my bass part disappear. I click in again, and I'm going to get back to where I can see both my bass and my drum part there. Again, I could scroll over here. Okay, there's my bass. Let's move it. All right, and that looks great. So um, uh, the focus mode, I think, is really, really helpful when it comes to, again, making um, edits on your different parts and making sure you can see exactly what's going on where, um, it's going to be incredibly, incredibly helpful. Again, what I would suggest doing is recording a couple MIDI clips, MIDI parts, um, selecting them, and just try these different functionalities because it's it's uh, new kind of tools. It's new paint uh, in, uh, in your palette, uh, colors in your palette that you can use. And you've got to kind of try them a few times before you understand them and can start to make them a part of your creative process. But these are all updates that are going to help you create um, a lot faster. Uh, and again, it's going to make it more enjoyable in the end to record and edit MIDI in Ableton Live. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye.